When the quarries closed in 1946, it looked like the end of the Telethlin Railway as well. But thanks to the efforts of a body of enthusiastic amateurs, it survived and is now run as a non-profit making concern available to the public by the Telethlin Railway Preservation Society. The Society's members give their free time to help run and maintain it. One of its locomotives has been in continuous operation since the line was opened in 1886. Nowadays, of course, the railway is purely a passenger line and well worth a visit. For not only does the Telethlin Railway run through some of the loveliest Welsh scenery, it's also a museum piece in complete contrast to the normal up-to-date railways in Wales. Here is perfect country for hiking for you cannot walk a few miles without a change of scene. Close woodland gives way to bare mountain, bare mountain to hill pasture, hill pasture to river valley, all in the space of a day's tramping. Agriculture is still the basic industry of the greater part of Wales. The typical Welsh farm is small and worked by the farmer and his family sometimes with one paid worker, rarely with more. This too springs from the nature of the land. There are few broad plains for large-scale mechanized farming, and over a quarter of the country's farmlands are a thousand feet or more above sea level, even though the sea is nowhere more than 50 miles away. by the world-famous Sir John Hunt, chief of the expedition which conquered Everest, a party of climbers starts up a mountainside in Snowdonia. Sir John's home is in Wales, and it was here that he and many of his Everest party put in their training, for Wales offers some of the best climbing in Great Britain. John Hunt's pupils on this occasion are youngsters from the outward bound sea school at Aberdovey, a venture which has attracted the interest of many public figures. In addition to the normal school curriculum, it emphasizes character building and the development of young people's powers of initiative and leadership. The boys take a month's course which includes both seamanship and rock climbing. They learn as well to travel across mountainous country by map and compass and to fend for themselves in all weathers. great Welsh mountaineers, for example Dr. Charles Evans, a native of Corwen, who was deputy to Sir John Hunt on the Everest expedition. But in general, the people of this land of mountains regard their peaks as part of a loved landscape. People come to Wales from many lands and once having been are sometimes haunted by it so that they return again and again. Perhaps because of the beautiful countryside, the charming villages, the friendly people. In all these things Wales is outstanding. But perhaps it is that Wales has a living and compelling personality, an appeal the visitor never quite forgets. In this old green land, fact and fable are woven together to make the tapestry of living. Past, present and future, all are one and all are alive.